Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, all, I mean, all, I mean, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us. Because y'all always see us on the street and be like, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep up the grind. How can we support a brand? Should we buy merch? What should we do? This is what you do on the each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below, right down here, there's a link that says join our membership. Become a member so you see all of the exclusive content that people been begging to see for the longest. That's how you see it, become a member. And you never know, we send you some free merch too. But anyway, thank you in advance and thank you for all the love and support. Listen, man, hey guys, we got a special guest in here today, man. I'm down here in Miami, man. Uh, what what is we what is this called a house of hits right yes sir yes sir we down here thank the house of hits for letting us come in here and record with this special someone man this guy right here Brian Michael what's going on guys thanks so much for having me today I really appreciate it man so when it when it come down to just uh, music man I've been listening at your sounds man and and the way that you the way that you do like when it come down to your music. I know we about to get all in your Kool-Aid and figure out the flavor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So get ready for a fantastic voyage because Miss Jamaica is about to ask you some questions, as she do on every interview. I think I'm ready. And I hope you ready. I think Let's I'm get ready. to it, Miss Jamaica. Go. So you were born and raised in where? I'm out of Syracuse, New York. Syracuse, New York? Yeah, I'm an upstate New York boy. I'm not hearing a New York accent. Uh, well, us folks from upstate are a little bit different than downstate in the city. You know, you down there, they talk a little bit different. It's a little faster paced than up upstate in New York. So we're okay. a little bit more country up there, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. So Okay. You and know, you it's good living. How far though. is it from New Jersey? From New Jersey, it's about three hours. Three hours. Yeah, give or take. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. So you were raised with your mom and dad? Yes, I was. So, well, started out, my mom and my dad raised me. I'm one of five and... Uh, yeah, I grew up there, and, and music was a big a part of our household. Um, who, and, who did it, the music, mom or dad or both? Like, listen both, to it. They both had their thing, but I would say mom. Mom was the one that was probably had the most influence when it came to, like, country music and okay. um, Lionel Richie and, and some of those artists that uh, really kind of, like, I really found myself gravitating towards. Wait, what? My, wait a minute, Lionel Richie. Yeah. So you like to say Lionel Richie, but you don't know nothing about no Lionel Richie. Which one? So did you I know, know a little bit? Did you know a song called Hello? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come Is on. It me Lionel Richie did a whole for? country album. Man, here you we go. You either gonna jump right to the country. Uh, yeah, my, I think it had a Christian bones. song, Jesus is Love. You can't it was a lot of songs by Lionel. Yeah. Lionel was cold, man. I don't think there'll He's never one be one of the best. I, I mean, don't there'll Lionel never Richie. be another Lionel Richie, man. The Commodores? Uh, yeah. The Commodores, I wasn't as exposed to as much as until he just kind of started doing his solo man, thing. But man, Brick I know House stuff and all these others. Yeah. What? Like yeah, it's a Mama lot of songs, man. Back in them days, we had some songs, man. Like, oh, I know. It was totally different. Yeah, my dad was more. My dad was from the city of Syracuse. My mom was from uh, Verona, New York, which was like thirty minutes east of uh, Syracuse, and that's where we spent our weekends. She was one of nine. She grew up on a farm, so you know, driving down there after church, we. She'd be having that that radio going for. Go ahead, us. not to be. So seen. mom was kind of the one that. No uh, Dad had his songs when I was in the car with him. But what mom, kind of music did Dad like to listen to? He was a big fan of car like the Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Uh, okay. He was a big Neil Diamond guy. Ooh, I love uh, Neil Diamond. He was that was kind of his his vibe. Okay. But yeah, so mom. Uh, so you got an all rounded. I feel. did, and that kind of that's kind of been what's kind of made me who I am as an artist. Kind of just. Uh, I'm not just your down the middle country artist, you know. Um, I, I've always grown up. I had older brothers that were a big influence in the R&B space um, and hip hop space. So, like, I was very blessed to get exposed to a lot of different things that allow me to kind of pull from a little bit from each different uh, genre of music. So, and who could sing, mom or dad? My dad could not carry could not <laughs> carry a tune to this day. <laughs> My mom can hold it down though. You know, she does her thing. So she's yeah, she's definitely the one that. Uh, I think uh, was the one that blessed me with um, I, the musical genes. I got to start out by asking this real quick. Okay. Um, 
we all go through situations at time, and especially when we love music. So if your mom loved music the way how you're saying that she did, when she was going through a stressful time or a time when she was just wanting to feel upbeat, what song would she put on or what song you would hear her singing around the house to make to cheer, to cheer herself up? Oh, man, that's a great question. I'd have to think about that for a minute. I don't know. I would say Lionel Richie and some of that music. I think that... Um, Do you know it well enough to give us a little bit? Um, I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain, yeah. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Then, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me, though. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> in. I'm trying to get there with you. I'll put it. I don't think I remember. And it's easy. Oh, easy it's like easy Sunday like Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the chorus. That chorus is dope, man. Dang, now I, my mom would be disappointed in me right now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Say, sorry, mom. <laughs> but, okay, mm. so you said you were one of five kids. Um, where mm -hmm. did you fall in between those five kids? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah, so I was right. I had two older brothers than me. And uh, then I had a younger sister and a younger brother. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you weren't the spoiled brat. You were like. You know, I was the middle child. So I was kind of a child. troublemaker a little bit, you know. Um, you know, but I, uh, yeah, I, I seemed to find myself in trouble, unfortunately, when it came to being in the classroom and stuff like that. I wasn't someone that necessarily thrived in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's more in the sports arena and music, but um yeah, I was just trying to always look up. To, I was always looking up to my older brothers and my sister, you know, and I are super tight. You know, I was always looking out for her. And then my younger, my youngest brother, Alex, um, he was a little bit younger than us, like in age wise. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was, it was a house. Uh, it was a busy house to say the least. So I know that um, your mom and dad eventually separated, right? Yep, they did. How old were you when that happened? Um, I was right around... Uh, right around ninth grade, tenth grade. Ninth grade, tenth grade. Yeah. And so, growing up, in order to see that split, you saw a lot of things leading up to the split. Yeah, I did. It was a lot of same patterns and things like that. Unfortunately, my dad uh, suffered with uh, alcoholism and, and addiction, so that you know, of course, took a toll on their marriage and our family and things like that. So. You know, my mom, just being the angel that she is, of course, she just, you know, she was trying to hold it down for everyone. She was trying to hold down my dad and, um, you know, trying to be there for him. But it was kind of a cyclical pattern with him trying to stay sober, you know, in and out of rehab and things like that. And so, you know, she had to make the tough decision for herself and for us kids, even though it wasn't fun. It was the right thing to, you know, move out and, and put us in a, a better situation because it just, you know, for my dad's sake, he needed to you know, get right, right, get help. Right, and seeing all of this, how did that affect your views on relationships or alcoholism and so forth? How did that affect your views growing up? I mean, it hit me in so many different ways, of course. Like, I, um, it just made me, it changed how I looked at, and you know, I wanted, obviously, my mom to be treated like gold, and so it just, it putting my mom on a pedestal, pedestal excuse mm -hmm. me, it just uh, made me realize, and I learned a lot of some things of what to do and what things not to do, you know? And, and uh, you know, I definitely think it also, it had its pluses and minuses on everything, you know, being exposed to that, you learn bad habits oh, you, you, and you try to learn from it as well. So um, it definitely has uh, affected me in many ways of just like when it comes to relationship and, and, I don't know, I would say a lot of aspects of my life has. You know, I'm kind of fumbling over my words right now, but I'm trying to think <laughs> it's such a deep question and, and going through that, it just, uh, you know, because it made people, me learn so much at a young age. Because some people get scarred. Some people will be like, oh, I, that's why I don't want to be in a relationship or I don't trust, you know, for females, they'll be like, I don't trust men because they saw that, they saw, saw what their mother had to go through. Mm -hmm. And then um, seeing what your dad did, you being a male, some males would be like, well, I'm trying not to be like him. So I did this, did this. 100%. You know. I was, so, I was, didn't want to be like my dad, even though, you know, he's my dad and I love him to death. But yeah, I was like, I don't want to be like that. And uh, it definitely affected me. I found myself that I wasn't really dating in, in high school and things like that, you know what I mean? I was always trying to play it, you know, kind of like, 
stay single. You know, it's kind of cool to stay single, not be vulnerable. You know, and going and seeing that kind of stuff, um, you know, I was kind of someone that kind of kept it inside. I wasn't really talking about it and doing like, you know, going to therapy and things like that, which so I wish I would have done. So you didn't start therapy early at all? No, we had done some family therapy, but I, I didn't get into it the way I wish I did Until now. you got older. Exactly. And so it, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of things that I'm working on to this day. I mean, I'm going to, I see a therapist and it's something I look forward to because, you know, because of the trauma I went through, there's a lot of work to be done. And I think one of the toughest thing is going inward and doing the work. But, you know, my goal is to just be the best version of myself that I can be for myself and um, just in general and doing and the work. And for your is, kids. Yeah, and that's did, the most important thing for me to just um, try to be my best version of myself. Did you ever so, have a fear that you were gonna be like him? Oh, 100%. Even although you felt like, cause it's so weird cause subconsciously cause you always like, I'm not gonna be like him, but in the back of your head, you're like, you know what? I'm his son, I might. I, yeah, I see I things might. sometimes, little even mannerism sometimes in it like. It freaks you sorry, out. Sorry dad, but it, it does. It really like rattles me to be like, wow, like I've, I've seen all this stuff. I've seen him behave a certain way and still, you know, being a human or whatever, just genes find yourself just right. like doing things or acting a certain way and you're like that scares me yeah. <laughs> you know yeah but um but yeah i'm definitely a lot more like my mom across the board i'm i'm very uh i had to sum it up i'd say i'm very um very sensitive very emotional person um i don't try to hide my feelings that's good. comfortable with sharing my feelings and things like that and i think that's why music and you know is so uh, important to me and so therapeutical um mm -hmm. and so yeah, I'm just, you know, every day's a challenge. But you know, awareness is, that's how you're gonna stay on the right path, being aware and being accountable for your actions and stuff like that. 100%. So that's, that's definitely, so when did you, how old were you when you started finding your love for music? So my mom always told me, you know, when she said, Brian, ever since I could remember, you know, like, she's like, I just felt like you were born with a song in your heart. Like, you just had that about you. Like, when I was out playing sports in the front yard or, mm -hmm. you know, they were making me do yard work and things like that. Like, I was always, the rake was becoming my mic. Mm -hmm. You know, the front steps were becoming my stage. And so, I was just always, even though I was very involved in sports, like, when we'd go on these tournaments, if there was karaoke around, like, they'd be putting me up on stage to do karaoke and things like that. As and young as how old? I think the first time I went, I won the first competition ever. I sang Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You no. at like 12 years old. Really? Yeah. yeah, and they played it on the radio. I wish I had that tape so bad. It probably sounds terrible. I would I have loved to hear bad, that. I know. To hit those notes and everything at such a young age. Yeah, so it was, it's been from a young age that I've just like, you know, I, I grew up in church and so I, I was singing, singing in church. I wasn't choirs. in the choir, but it I just wasn't? loved it. But I was in like select chorus and stuff like okay. that in school. Okay. And always did like, the different plays and things like that. Everyone was involved, but you know, I, I just ended up, luckily I was, again, just given the talent by God to be able to perform. And so, you know, I'd end up getting the come some of the lead roles and stuff like that. So it's just always been my safe space, honestly, and kind of touching on what you were saying before, like when things were hostile within the home mm -hmm. or at the house, like I would go to this one room and I would just sit there with the music and mm -hmm. I would put the headphones on and it was my happy place. It was my escape, you know, it was the place where I so could go to. Hear if, it, if it that was wasn't in on. the house, yeah, if, it, if I couldn't get out of the house, which most of the time when I was old enough to get out, I would, right. but when I wasn't, those headphones were going on and I was just locking in with that and taking myself to like a safe, a safe space. And it's so crazy because you said earlier that you would stay away from girls even through high school and stuff like that. But when I think about when I was younger and, you know, the boys would sing, girls would always be like, ah, you know, they would go crazy. So I wouldn't think that, I think that all the girls would be chasing you in high school. Well, that's the thing where I probably would have was seeing some early on, uh, you know, symptoms, but I, of my pops probably, cause I was like, of course I, I there were girls that I was attracted to and I liked hanging out with the girls, but I never wanted to commit. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to ever be serious and date and all those things. So like my first serious girlfriend wasn't until like, I don't know, like my senior year. Really? Yeah. Before it was always just like playing the field, playing it cool, doing your thing. If a girl was into me, it was like, keep it moving, <laughs> you know, into the chase and all that craziness. <laughs> so, you know. How old was you when you first started stringing that guitar like that? You know what? The guitar, I started playing the piano first. Okay. And then <clears throat> I didn't pick up the guitar until right around COVID. Really? Yeah. 
And that's when I taught myself the guitar because I was going out and doing shows and I was playing with this one dude and he was playing guitar with me and my first instrument's always been my, my voice. Mm -hmm. And he moved away and I was like, okay, like now's my time. I'm, I'm locked in this house, can't go anywhere. And uh, you know, I wanted to be self-reliable or you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when I was like, no, I'd kind of picked it up a couple of times and I was like, man, you know, this is tough and kind of like gave it an effort, but it wasn't like really committed to it. And the second I committed to it and putting in the work like anything is when I just started falling in love with it. Well, so let's, that was go, let's go and get you to play us a little something, man. Give us something. You want to hear? Okay. Let's, let's, get, let's get let's something cool. going here, man. I'd like to hear it. Okay. Talking about my mom, I might have to play this song that I wrote for her. Mm, that would make it up for the fact you couldn't sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I wrote this song. The song I'm about to play right now is a song, um, like I kind of mentioned before, my mom has always been um, the rock for us kids. And uh, she's totally like, to me, she, I just, I'm a mama's boy. And I put her on a pedestal. And um, so th I wanted to write a song. I had this idea, talking to some of my buddies, I wrote this with it. And I just wanted to write a song kind of for her, but mm -hmm. really that described the relationship of my mom and I because my mom has, the relationship between us is like, whenever I would see my mom cry, I would instantly, I had this visceral reaction and I would in, instantly start crying. And it didn't matter if I had walked in the door and she was sad because something was sad was going on or if it was tears of like reading a birthday card I got her. Wow. And, and I'd, I'd see her start crying as soon as I saw her start to choke up and take that like kind of, I instantly would have tears running down my face. And it was like, I couldn't even control it if I wanted to, you know? And so I wrote this song. I'm gonna grab a pick real quick. Mm -hmm. And it's called Seeing Mama Cry. And it sounds sad, it's not. It's just about how much my mom means to me. And uh, you know, how she's always been my hero on the rock to us. So this song is called uh, Seeing Mama Cry. Broken home, nights alone taught me to tough it out. How to take a loss and brush it off and never let it keep me down. I've been around the block a time or two. She's the one that got me through. So when it comes to staying strong, I can take one on the chin. Sure, keep it together Go round for round Holding my ground Through the worst kind of weather Ain't a damn thing I can do When a tear rolls from her eye There's nothing in this world That breaks me like Seeing mama cry Seeing mama cry happens quick whether it's tears of pain or joy yeah I'm done I go from a grown man to mama's boy yeah I can take one on the chin I can sure keep it together go round for round holding my ground through the worst kind of weather ain't a damn thing I can do when a tear rolls from her eye there's nothing in this world that breaks me like seeing mama cry. Mmm, seeing mama cry. She's my rock, my hero. She's my guiding light. God knows. I know she's the reason why That I can take one on the chin I can sure keep it together 
Go round, full round, hold my ground through the worst kind of weather. Ain't a damn thing I can do when a tear rolls from her eyes. There's nothing in this world that breaks me like seeing mama cry. Seeing mama cry Seeing mama cry Thank you so much Listen man I, I'm going to tell you wow. something I, that'll, that'll mess me up I can't listen to that bro I'll be crying like Get crazy right here. <laughs> Yeah cause mama passed so long ago And just thinking back oh, to her real? like that yeah. You know and thinking about them times. The things that she went through. Yeah, I can't. Did was, you see your mom cry? Of course. Man. I can't think about it. It's tough. Right now. That's it's what like I'm I always saying. told it's my tough, mom, bro. when you die, I just want to hop in the casket with you. Bro, it's <laughs> tough, I'm going. Bro. It's tough because you're thinking back to that time, and that's not a place where you want to even try to see her mm -mm. when you can't see her no more. Yeah. You, you know can't what I'm even saying? say that because now you have a family that of your own that you got to think about. I know, right? You got to yeah. be here Crazy. for them. Exactly. So, it's a whole nother level. So yeah, when you yeah. sing that song, do you, you're thinking about her? Are you thinking about the things that she's been through when you're singing that song? Yeah, it does. It takes me right back. And it just, um, that song really reminds me every time just like how blessed I am. Like to be given the gift of her as my mom by God is just, I look at her as an angel, honestly. Like the things that she pulled us through and, you know, there's a lot of people that go through a lot of things, so it's not a pity party. But, like, she's just such an incredible, inspirational woman and person, and she has a heart of gold. And, you know, I just thank the good Lord for her every day because yeah. she is – she's really a special woman. Yeah, that's man, like, like, yeah, yeah, that's – Man, you that's up there, man. You know, dear mama and two Tupac, dear mama. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, this is this song here. We, we work it. Can I get that song? Or? Yeah, no. So I just put that song out about a month and a half ago. So you can go on Spotify and yeah, Apple Music, God, iTunes. Dog, I'm gonna put that YouTube one in my music. playlist. It's called Hair Mama Cry. It's called Seeing Mama Cry. Seeing Mama Cry. That's one going mama to the cry. playlist right there. But I can't I listen to it. it man. I gotta I cry when ain't it. nobody watching. You know, I go in the yeah. dark and just <laughs> let them tears roll down. So I'm saying, hey, you gotta just let it go. I gotta let you see me. You know. Come but you know it's go funny go in my office and just let them roll down cause y'all always talk about like when Mother's Day come around and all of that they always say there's so many songs for mom but when Father's Day come around there's hardly any songs for dad I know you're right I get a lot of people um, you know that song's been doing really well and I'm so I'm so grateful for that but a lot of people asking me like oh can you write a song about dads, dads. you know right. and uh but I agree with you. There isn't a lot of songs. That Would that be like. hard for you since you don't really, you didn't have that great of a relationship with your dad to write a father song? You know what? There's a lot of ideas that I have, so I put all my song ideas and concepts in my phone, and um, it's always concepts and ideas where like the real story I feel because I love my father and he's my dad, and you know I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings just because I love him, but like. A lot of the songs would be written like, would be like, I learned what not to do and things like that, which is probably hard for him. But he knows what the truth is. You know, there are a lot of things that he did that weren't the best example of, you know, of things that he should be doing to be teaching a young man. I heard you say that earlier when we were talking too, and in my mind, I kept thinking, okay, your dad from the moment you were born all the way up till now. Um, you can't tell me it has always been bad. You must have had some good moments that you, maybe the bad overshadowed some of the good, but yes. you have to reach back in and start thinking about some of the good stuff when you were younger, before he started, you know, the addictions and stuff like that. Totally. No, there's a lot of memories. There is a lot of times that I can look back and reflect on there were good times with my dad. And, and my dad and I did have a special bond. Like my dad, pushed me um, very hard and expected a lot of me, especially um, in the sports arena. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, had some success in, in the whole, uh, you know, playing different sports. And so, you know, we would go away. I, I played tra a lot of travel club teams and, and he was the one most of the time that was like my one-on-one -on -one time with him. You know, he would take me to tournaments and things like that. And, and we call each other buddies. He would say it today. We call each other. He would say, "You're my, we're buddies for life, right, Bri? Uh -huh. So there is a lot of special moments that I have with my dad. Um, 
you know. Um, and you're right. Some things, unfortunately, some negative experiences or negative things that have happened can outweigh that. But right. like, there's definitely positive memories that I t- still will cherish and I still hold on to. And it's not all bad. Um, you know, I still have communication with him. I still talk to him regularly. I'm there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm one of his number one fans. Um, have you truly forgiven him? Yeah, I have. I, I truly do. Like he, you know, he, he, I give him a lot of credit. There's a lot of times that my dad could have laid down and given up on, you know, the battle of addiction because it's a it's a scary road. And he continues to fight the fight. And, you know, he's fallen, he's gotten back up, and he's dusted himself off. So, you know, I don't know what that's like. And, you know, thank God, but I can't imagine. I know how hard of a journey is and that, like, at the end of the day, like, he has had my back and he provided, you know, um, took care of us kids financially and things like that. Um, and there's definitely certain things he did support us and help us with raise right. some of the things that you would want and wish for more from a child maybe not so much you know but i think he did the best he could do when he could do it yeah. and i think that's what a lot of people you know yeah. he had a tough upbringing himself and so you know i think everyone tries to do their best with what they're doing it's just some days your best is better than other days well you know you know god's grace is sufficient man like totally. you got to understand man like a lot of times we only do what we see so the things that he see, uh, I guarantee somewhere he's seen something that make him who he is because we only do what we see. Totally. So at the end of the day, my granddaddy uh, had his issues, nine boys, five girls, and I remember. What? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dang, but one, but one I of thought the sons, nine was a lot. No, nine boys and five girls. Um, wow, God bless but, From the same woman. Yeah, from the same woman. Sheesh. That's Married That's like crazy. almost 50 years. But the thing is, you got to understand one of his sons got killed on the back of the truck. And I think I know that changed things. You know, I hear stories and can't growing imagine. up, you know, but it changed the way he did things. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Then I you got to still continue to raise all these other eight boys or, you know what I'm saying? You no, still got to go on. And I think that's where you got to understand. And there was a lot of dysfunctionalities in the fact of things that happened you know, in his background as well, I'm pretty sure you start digging, you start finding. Absolutely. So the thing you got to truly understand is that this thing, you know, is it, something that keeps trickling. And until you break that generational curse, I call it, you know, and that forgiveness kick in, then then there, there ha- that, that can't change. If you change the way you treat your father, he has to change the way he receives you. So uh, telling him I love you. Breaking those boundaries that other, you know, things that that, that he not used to hearing but from a mother. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of time break those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, so 100%. I, I, I had, had to do that. My dad never hugged me. I think he hugged me the first time when I graduated. Wow. You know what I'm saying? My dad never, he never showed emotions like that. He never played with me one time. Because yeah. his father didn't do because it for him. Because his father didn't play. Exactly. That's so he didn't play. know how to. He never told me he loved me. I had to start telling him that till he died. Mm-hmm. Would always tell him that. Did he ever tell you back? I don't know. I don't think so. But I don't care. It was just me trying to break that cycle. So my son, my son tell me he's back now. And my other son. So we always, it's just something we do now because I wanted to break and change that cycle. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No, so 100%. You got to change it, man. My dad was good about that. He would tell us he loved us, you know. And, uh, you know, he just like was the same similar situation you were saying. Like his upbringing, his dad was an alcoholic you know, kind of walked out when he was a young kid and, you know, he just didn't have a role model. But, you know, I guess I could say the same thing. I guess our job is, you know, to just to cycle. try to break the cycle and take it one step further, right. at least one step further. So for me, I could use that as a crutch and say, oh, my dad, you know, he was suffering from alcoholism and drug addict and, you know, he just wouldn't come home at night. He'd stay out of the bar, or whatever, and then make excuses for myself and my own relationship. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's we got to just, like you said, try to break the cycle well, and learn to, from our but, mistakes. Yeah, or think learn of from those others. things which are positive and all yes. that too, because he paid bills. He, oh, he, yeah. he he bought me my first snake skin boots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. That's you know, dope. he he's he, he done some things. He, he taught he me how you to work. Swag. Yeah, he taught yeah. me how to work, and you know, it's certain things he did do. So I have to hold on to them. You know, yeah. he took me, showed me things that a lot of other men. At least he did try. Yeah. One time he almost had to do work for me on somebody for trying to get at me. So, you know, he, <laughs> you know, he, I know like he loved too. me, you know, yeah. so he showed me through his actions. Yeah. And that's how, that's how you I You got to think that. about the positive. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, if we keep 
concentrate on the negative, you will never, you'll build more hate than love towards 100%. a person. And like I always say, as long as the person is still living, you have more than ample time to, to build that bond of course, and absolutely. make things better, you know? Yeah. not Maybe not even just for y'all's relationship, but for the grandkids, seeing that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, a hundred percent. Cause when they're gone, there's nothing else you can do. Exactly. Who, who, so who did you listen to? Like, like who's your favorite country singer? Favorite top three country singers of all time. What stage in his life? Cause you know it I'm, changes. I'm not worrying about none oh, of that. Man. I don't want right any now. genre. Right now, dead or alive, any genre. Ooh. Top three country singers, uh, male no. or female. How about just top three periods? Let's just not just say country. <laughs> music, period. music period. Music period. Any genre. artists oh. of all time. Okay. Dead or alive. This is real tough. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was a huge Michael Jackson So he's, uh, he's your guy. Michael Jackson. Number one. Okay. I loved Usher. Or I love Usher. Number loved two. Him. Justin Timberlake. Number three. Well, that's loved, it. Uh, so you said, no, no, that's, that's it. it. So that's you, it. Oh, no country singers? Country. I was about no, to go No, it's country. only three. You didn't even okay, three. pick nobody from country? I'm going to say... My throwback's gonna be Lionel Richie. Okay, okay. that's number one. I'm gonna say Usher's my number two, number or two. With the, in the group, and then I'm gonna say one more. Sheesh. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of Chris Stapleton. Okay. Ah. I'm a big fan. Of I'm gonna set your top three down. If I had to pick my top three to go against your top three, okay, let's go. Uh, Dead or alive. I'm gonna bring BB King in there to slap on that good talk. Okay. I don't know how y'all gonna handle that. Okay, okay. You know who will be your number two? <laughs> number two, uh, that just going, you know, I got to have a real, real. You better get some of the contestants. You need somebody. He, he did, he sing did. Sing and yeah, because he got did. Somebody. Uh, he did I got old. Somebody. I can use Michael, so you might. Well, I, okay. can use, I can use. No, 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 no. He did old, then he did I new. Well, I just then gave he you one country. of mine. I just gave you one of mine. So okay. you got to do the same gave, genre I to I beat him. You, I gave you one of mine, and I did blue. I think you're just delayed. I did blue. So, okay, so somebody new. No, blues. Blues is the old person. It's blues old. Yes. So I need somebody new now. Somebody new? No, no, no. I got you. I need somebody new. Somebody brand new. Not brand new. Usher isn't brand new, so no. somebody up against Usher, Usher. I'm gonna say Chris Brown. Okay. And easy. then somebody country now. Country. Now that's a that's not an easy one me to, for me to pick. Um man, I ain't gonna lie, I gotta put that brother up against him. I'm gonna say Darius Rucker. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Brian Michael. <laughs> <laughs> now Darius Rucker, man, I just think is he gonna bring it. Yeah. He gonna bring it. Listen, he's that he's gonna bring it. Across, oh. Darius does his thing, man. I mean, I could have went with Jason Aldean, Brad Paisley. I could have went with uh any of those guys, man. Yeah. Luke. Uh I could have went with a lot of different Luke Holmes is yeah. He's a real one. I could have went with Blake a Shelton. lot of different I could have Yeah. Uh, but I didn't. So you're gonna go with that one, huh? No, I'm going with my boy. Okay. Darius Rucker, the only brother that's just looking lonely. I love Carrie. Kane, though? And y'all, I was about to say, y'all not calling no females now. I love Carrie. She all right. I'm a fan of Carrie. I love Dolly Parton. Big fan of Laney Wilson. She all right. Dolly's boss, Reba's boss. Hey, Reba, oh my God, I love Reba. Man, please. Y'all, you start talking about women, man. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Dolly Parton, but but it's a lot of them, man. It's just so it's many. A it's a lot. But, it, but you got to understand one thing, man. When it's get when you start dealing with music, you got to you got Aretha Franklin and all those people, man. When it come down to soul, bro, it's, it's a different world. It is. So you start talking about Patti LaBelle, we'll shut, we'll break these wonders Diana in here. Ross. Diana Ross is dope. I just I, I have a question. Beyonce. What's the first song? What's the first song to make they you cry? <laughs> this dude's crazy. What what's the first song that made you cry? Made you that cry? you heard that you listened to and you you cried. Cause you you said you're in tune with your emotions, so oh, I'm a super sensitive dude. Right. So, what song did you listen to that made you? You want to know what? I think. Shoot, don't get emotional now, Bri. I think <laughs> honestly, my dad was someone that didn't show. He wasn't vulnerable when it came to emotion. Mm -hmm. And um, he played this song for me that was. Um, I'm trying to pull the name of the song while we're talking, but. Um, that he actually talked to me for the first time about his dad, who dad, my dad's parents both died at like 52 and 56. And, um, you know, and he's never really like talked about it. He doesn't try to close off his emotions. And he sh played me a song and I saw him get choked up about it. And I think that really moved me to see my dad get emotional because he wasn't someone that really got emotional. Um, 
that you don't I'm remember trying to think song. of the song do you remember the, the, I remember the lyrics how, I'm trying to think how it goes yeah um Shoot, I might have to look this up. <laughs> I might have to look this up. But it also it ultimately in the song it talks yeah. about someone passing in like okay. the last verse. And um and I think it just went back you know, my dad moved his father in with us to take care of him the last kind of month of his life. Mm. And uh it was just um I remember the morning walking in when my grandfather passed, my mom and my dad were in the room and um yeah, I just think that like like you were speaking, I think my dad, I'm probably gonna get emotional right now. Um, <laughs> my dad had a lot of things that he wished he would have said to his dad. So I'm gonna keep it together and leave it yeah. there. But yeah, he just, like you said, it's life is so short. You That's did, why I you say you and gotta you say. You cannot tell people that you love here. that you love them enough. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, shout out to don't all forgive. the people who come on my show and don't understand love. We have a lot of people, you know. I try to explain it to them. I, the different levels different of love. Kinds yeah. of love. Eros love, which is a romantic love. Philia love, which is between a friend. You know, agape love, unconditional. I try to explain it to them, but they can't get Sturgio love. You got all type of different loves, man. And the thing is, they get caught up in just, man, why do people say they love you? They don't really love you. when you know. But at the end of the day, man, if you really, really are connected and well-respected, and you see things in life and you grow wisdom, I think that pushes you to become one that will tell someone, hey, man, I love you. I'll feel something for another brother. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. and, and, and you just got to understand love. I don't think a lot of people do. I think a lot of young people really need to understand love. I agree. I think there's a lot of people out there just kind of scratching at the surface. And they don't know. They don't want to do, the, they don't want to dig any deeper, whether it's not willing to be, you know, fearful of being vulnerable or yes, never that's, that's, experience that's it right it. there. So they're just gonna shut it down and they're gonna close off and just, you know, not willing to become vulnerable to to experience that true intimacy. Wow. Of, like on different levels, obviously, when it's a, you know. So, so do you have a like a project out or, or just songs? So right now I don't have a full project out. I have four songs out. Like okay. I said, on iTunes and okay. Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. I have a song called Low Key. I have a song called A Little Country. I have that song, Seeing Mama Cry. And then I have a song that I just put out um, called Turn That Down. Go stream that, guys. you got to go stream that. Yeah, That's, please do. Yeah. With a voice like what he has, you should be doing it right now. That's all right. Let's go. I appreciate you guys so much. But, okay, so coming up and you decide to do country, coming up singing, what country singer did you look up to that you sort of modeled the way in which they sing or how they moved? Are you thinking he's just going to bite somebody's style? I'm not saying he's going to totally bite it, but normally people, when they're coming up, they they do model after somebody no. and then tweak it who, to who, make it who, their who own. It? Uh, you, you, you bit? She's kind of right. Did you bit? You bite somebody's style? No, I think that, like, for me, being exposed to a lot of different music, like, there's always people that you look up to, right? Like... Kobe probably studied Jordan's game. He did. Right? Ain't, exactly. no he wasn't going Ain't no problem to it. But he, he wasn't going to necessarily like, okay, he's, but let me see, watch his game. Let me study it. And how did he become so great? But how do I make that work with it? You know, some people are quicker. Some people are just shooters. Some people are this. So me, watching, you know, listening to all this music, a lot of it was like, when you come to a Brian Michael show, you're going to see a country artist that has like an urban swagger to them. Mm -hmm. So it's like the people I talk of, Michael Jackson, Usher, Justin Timberlake. Think of that type of performance where there's actually like, you know, and this is no discredit to anyone else, but there's actual, um, you know, maybe choreographed dancing involved and you're out front working the stage, but then you can strip it back and you can go to like a Tim McGraw or a Garth Brooks and strip it down on the acoustic guitar and connect on a very low key like kind of acoustic vibe and then you're back out and, and bringing that high energy again so I did take pieces of people like those artists and Garth Brooks and Tim McGraw and Billy Currington and the Rascal Flats. like there was a little bit of them that I was like I really dig that but how can I make that Brian Michael yeah you know yeah because I'm there's only one Brian Michael and there's already a Justin Timberlake there's already an Usher there's already a Tim McGraw all these people I want to be authentic to myself but I did I would be lying if I didn't say I studied them because I was inspired by them and I respected what they were doing. Wow. That's awesome. Where, where do you see this music taking you? 
You or where do what? you want it to take you? you know, say, <laughs> ugh, give it about five years. I said with the good Lord, I can do anything. Anything's possible. So the good book say I can do all things. Exactly. Through Christ. Through Christ, through Christ me. exactly. And so yep. I just want to be the best artist that I can possibly be. And I want to use my music that fills my soul and fills my heart. And I want to use that to be able to connect and touch and, you know, um, uplift other people in this world. You know, I just feel that they're, that's the reason that I was given this gift, I was blessed with this gift, and to use it the right way, which is, you know, I would like to be, of course, be in a situation where I can take care of my family, my mom, my dad, you know, my little ones, my relatives, whatever. But at the end of the day, also, you know, I did, this is what I love to do, and I think the music is the, one of the most powerful things out there and it can really touch people's lives and it can pull them through things just like it did for me. My tough times, there were songs that I can remember mm -hmm. that literally got me through a breakup and got me right. through these things. So I just want to try to do it to try to, you know, share my story with the world and try to connect with other people and help that it can be healing for them or uplifting and, and that it can just, you know, hopefully, um, you know, connect with them. Have well, you ever collabed with anybody before? I haven't yet. And if you had to collab with, say, give me two people that you would love to collab with. In the country space? Any genre. Because in today's day and age, people are mixing different genres and making a banger. Dang. Yeah. Um, I would love to do something with Post Malone. Post Malone. I would love to do something with Kane Brown. Oh, wow. Uh, I'd love to do something with... I mean, it's a long list. Lainey Wilson is someone in the country space I think is killing it. Jelly Roll. I love Jelly Roll. <laughs> Big fan of Jelly Roll. That dude's energy is wow. like next level. I mean, I would love to do something with Beyonce. Um, wow. You know, some of these people, um, Justin Timberlake would be amazing okay. for me. So, That's I don't know. Cool. There's so many people that I just love their music. And, mm. um, you know, it would just be really cool to get in. The room with them and create some some work to artwork together to create some music and uh you know just especially when you were just looking up to them and having the same dream the right. same goal to just be doing something together be do really you cool. write all of your songs so i do all the songs that are out right now the majority of them i am an artist that's opening to c cutting outside songs but yeah right now the songs that i happen to put out happen to be ones that i've written have you written for anybody else I've written some songs that I haven't cut that people have cut. Two other artists out of Nashville have cut two songs um, that weren't songs that I wanted to cut. And so, but I'm definitely the same thing I would love to collaborate on, just in getting in the rooms and writing for other artists, you know. Mm -hmm. Any way that I can create something that, and, and put out to the world that I feel is special to me, then I'm about it. What do you think about uh, different people like your Beyonce's, like uh, different people, like Post Malone, people who, who uh, you know, come from out of hip hop or whether it be R&B or whatever, and then jump in the country. What do you think about that? I fully embrace it. I think that, um, I think that you should always be continued to try to evolve as an artist or as a person, period, and pushing the brown boundaries is something that I want to be doing. Um, and so, you know, some of these artists that are doing right now, like Beyonce and Post Malone and Lana Del Rey, like, why not? If you have that desire and you have that goal for yourself, you know, I don't think anyone should be anything but supported in their music if it's something that, you know, that's something that they want to do, you know? And I don't really believe, especially for myself, I don't want to create people to be stuck in one lane. Like, if you're able to just, something that you're inspired by or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just something, if, if you're inspired by something, it strikes a chord with you and you want to do something in that space, whatever the genre is, I think you should go for it. Wow. Man, how can people get a hold to you if they're trying to reach out? So you can reach out, you can get in touch with me. So all my social uh, platforms, it's Brian Michael Music on TikTok. On Instagram, it's I'm Brian Michael. So just the letters I M and then Brian with an I, Michael. Um, and then you can also on Facebook, my fan page is Brian Michael Music. Uh, so those are three platforms right now that you guys can go check me out and 
you know, listen to my music and get to know me. Wow, you man. Know? Brian Michael, thank you so much for coming Yo, on the I show. Yo, I appreciate you guys so much, man. Oh, it's yeah, man. Come on, man. It's been a great, 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 great. Thank you so much, guys. Pleasure. And guess what, man? What's up? Boss Talk 101, man. Let's go, Boss Talk 101. This has been another go great segment. Go subscribe, y'all. Come on. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. That's a boss.